Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Saturday and happy Easter to all of you. We're so glad that you're joining yes. us today for an incredible Easter service, our second one of the weekend, and we're so thankful that you're jumping in. Welcome to North Place Church. Welcome to North Place mm -hmm. Online. Mm -hmm. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is JC. This is my wife, Brianna, and we get to serve as the online campus pastors here at North Place Church, and it is such a joy and blessing to be with you all. We're so thankful and excited to jump into an incredible service today. You don't want to miss it. We're glad <laughs> that you're here. Brie, why don't you help us welcome our guest today? <laughs> yes, absolutely. If it is your first time, we are honored that you decided to join North Place yes. today. We are going to have a great service yeah. today, and we are so happy that you are here. We would love to connect with you, build community with you. We believe that life is better in community. So one way that we can connect with you is if you will... Uh, fill out this connection form and if you can just scan the QR code or click the link in the chat you will have this connection form you can fill out we just want to get to know you get to know your name where you're from and we would love to send you a special Easter gift that we have available for you this Easter just to say thank you so much for being a part of our Easter services here at North Place that's right we don't take it lightly that you're here joining us today we're so thankful in our heart is to be a church community for you and we want you to be a part of the church family yeah. with us and even as an online community you're going to find across all of our streaming platforms we have a little chat section in all of our platforms let us know where you're watching from say hey yeah we would love to connect with you and we have some incredible online hosts in the chat right now that would love to connect with you. it's kind of like our virtual lobby and so yeah. we would love to meet you there and if you're a guest please sign up please scan that QR code just so that we can connect with you. We promise we won't spam you with anything. We just want to say thank you for being here, answer any questions, and even yeah. pray with you if there's yeah. any prayer needs that you have in your life. We're about to jump into an incredible time of worship together and an incredible message from Pastor Brian. So no matter where you are today, in your home, in your car, let's open our hearts and engage the Lord, exalt the name of King Jesus together. We'll see you right back here after worship. Happy Easter, North Place Church.
Jesus, we praise you. King Jesus, we lift you up. Yours is the name above every other name. King Jesus, yours is the name to which all power and honor and glory belong. Lord, today we come and we celebrate the sacrifice and the love of a king for us. The depths that a king would go, that we could be known, forgiven, redeemed, freed, and made whole. We celebrate you today, King Jesus. We love you and worship you. It's why we've gathered, it's why we've come today to to offer you our praise and our thanks, our gratitude, our hearts, and our love for who you are and what you've done for us. King Jesus, today is about you. And it's in your name, everyone said, amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. You may be seated today. Amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us this Easter. And if you're just tuning in, happy Easter. Welcome to North Place Church. Welcome to North Place Online. We're so glad that you're here joining us for an incredible Easter service as we gather as a community to celebrate the risen King. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is JC. This is my wife, Brianne, and we get to serve as the online campus pastors here at North Place Church. And we're so thankful that you're tuning in today. Yes, absolutely. It's a great day here at North Place. If it is your first time, welcome. We are so, so glad that you are here with us tuning in today. We would love to connect with you. And one way that we can do that is if you will fill out this connection form where we can get to know you, get to know your name, where you're from. How you can do this is either scanning the QR code that you see on the screen or clicking the link that is in the chat. This will just give us a chance to get to know you. Like I said, where you're from, your name. And we would love to send you a gift a special Easter gift that we have for you this Easter just to say thank you so much. We don't take it lightly that you decided to join North Place today. So we would love to send you a gift and just say thank you so much. That's right. Our hope is that you would find community here. We would love to be that for you as a church family to help walk alongside you in your faith. Uh, and just be friends. We would love to connect with you uh, as you grow in this faith journey. We hope that you encounter Jesus today as yeah. a part of this Easter service. We're about to jump into the rest of our service, but I wanted to bring you guys in and give you a heads up on what our service is going to look like because I want to invite all of you as our online community to really participate and jump in to what God is doing and what God has invited us into today for this service. So at the end of service, uh, after Pastor Brian preaches a powerful message, we're going to have a moment to respond where we're going to ask ourselves a question. And what we really believe about what Jesus did thousands of years ago where he died on the cross, he was buried for three days, and he rose again through the resurrected King Jesus. What he did demands a response from us. And what we're going to do is we've really prayed about this for weeks and months leading up to Easter is we're making space for us as a church to respond. And so we're going to have a time of prayer, worship, reflection, and just give you all the space that you need to respond to King Jesus. And so I invite you, be a part of that. Don't let the screen, don't let the the digital format kind of separate you from what God is doing because we believe God wants to meet you and he wants to encounter you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So no matter where you're at, at the end of service, we encourage you, respond. Do what you need to do to get in a posture and a heart of worship because we really believe God's going to do something powerful and you don't want to miss it. So we're going to jump into an incredible message and we'll see you right back here after that time to respond. And we want to make sure that we connect with you. So don't go anywhere. We want to follow up and share some more details on how you could connect with us and how we could connect with you here at North Place Church. Once again, thanks so much for joining us. Happy Easter. And we'll see you right back here after the message. And I want to take the opportunity right now to welcome in our campus family. We have our North Place campus in Wiley. We have our North Place campus in Garland. Our actual South uh, Africa campus in Durban is joining us in this coronation on Easter weekend. We want to welcome them. The men in the Hughes unit in Gatesville, Texas, that's a part of our prison campus there. We want to welcome them. And 
you know, I had a unique conversations on at our Friday night East or uh, Good Friday services with several first responders who are having to work. And I didn't plan on this. I didn't know this, but they were saying that was the only time they could come back. And multiple stations and units across DFW are tuning into this service today from the station. And so to all those first responders, firefighters, all of you that told me your whole crews would be watching today, we welcome you into this service today. Thank you for worshiping with us this weekend. We're so honored that um, you guys are with us today. And I just want to make you aware, every Easter we pick um, something special. You know, Resurrection Weekend's a big deal, and we want to do something unique with our resurrection offering. And, And we always pick something that we feel like really is near and dear to the heart of God. You'll learn if you're hanging around North Place Church much, we have a heart for marginalized and uh, disenfranchised people. And uh, we say here that we invite the uninvited. We, um, we go after forgotten people in forgotten places, which is one of the reasons why in just a couple weeks we're throwing a massive prom in our lobby here at Saxe. Uh, our campus right out here will be having a prom for special needs high school kids from school districts all across this area and our own champions ministry high school kids in our own champions ministry here in the church will be coming to that prom it'll be a really special night it's one of the reasons all these easter services are being streamed into thousands of federal prisons across the country this weekend because we believe god has a plan and a purpose for those men and women and we're inviting them to the table today and it's also one of the reasons we have such a a passion for the orphan. We have a global ministry, really, that that engages orphans globally, but we haven't forgotten about Texas. We have a real ministry to children in the foster system here in the state of Texas, and one of the ways we serve them uh, is summer camps. We have we give the significant part of the early summer to serving kids in foster camps. And these are some of the worst abuse cases in the state of Texas. Abuse, neglect, abandonment. We bring them in, treat them like kings and queens, and often are able to help them find their forever families. And some of those kids are in our church now, been adopted by families in our church. And so what we decided to do on this Easter Resurrection Weekend is dedicate a significant portion of today's offering and generosity towards sponsoring those kids to camp. So if you're a regular faithful tither and giver to North Place, just know there's a portion of your generosity going to that. If you want to designate something to that, there's a way for you to do that. Uh, The ways to give are on your screen, your normal generosity, but in every one of those, there's a drop-down tab for you to designate a gift. All you got to do is put it towards foster camps, and every designated gift toward that, every cent will be used for that. If you have a physical gift today, and all you got to do is put your offering in the envelope and um, in the seat back pockets in front of you, and there are our giving centers at the exits of all of our sanctuaries at all of our campuses and you can place your gift there and if any part of that is designated toward foster camp just write that on the envelope it will all be used for that purpose today i just want to invite the lord into our services today in a really special way and that the next few minutes would matter in our lives father uh, we've been praying a long time planning a long time Uh, to host you and to crown you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I pray today that this moment would not just be religious ritual or liturgy, but there would be something profound that would happen in the deep recesses of every one of our hearts. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that are a part of North Place, you probably know this, uh, if you've been around a while, when I don't ever do this, I stand to preach, and so if they ever bring out a stool, uh, I'm intentionally changing my posture because I don't want to be seen as preaching, I want to be seen as having a conversation, and that's what I want to do right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach in just a moment, but I really just want to have a raw, honest conversation with you for the next few minutes, just before I preach, just share my heart with you. This is a pastor moment, a shepherd moment. Months ago, uh, I was praying about this Easter weekend, and uh, I really felt like the Lord asked me to lead the church to do some very specific things this weekend, one of which was to have a coronation service, and the other was to bring the room to a decision and allow the room corporately, but each of us individually, to decide whether or not we're going to crown him as the king of our own life. And I felt like he asked me to strip it all back and make it just about that. A lot of churches this weekend are up in their game, you know, there's a lot of guests that will come through the doors of their church and they're trying to impress the guests so that they come back next week or sometime later and the church grows and I'm not knocking that at all. 
But I just really felt like the Lord asked me, no pageantry, no choir cantatas, no flying angels, none of that stuff. Just strip it all back and just crown me as king. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take a really massive risk over the next few minutes and just have a heart-to-heart conversation with you about Jesus being king. You know, good preachers, when they preach on Easter, they leave you praising the sermon. Great preachers leave you praising the king. And my hope today is that when we leave here, that's what you're doing, is that you're willing to crown him as the king of your life. Have you ever wondered why Easter is such a big deal? I mean, I've got friends that are, would be considered agnostic, maybe even atheist, and uh, they'll come to church on Easter for me uh, to pay their respects. Or I know people who have no faith background at all, but because it's cultural, it's a big deal in our culture, they, they show up at church on Easter to pay their respects. So why is Easter such a big deal? Religious people, even some irreligious people. Maybe this is why. Listen to this emphatic statement the Apostle Paul makes. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. That's strong language. Every ounce of humanity's hope is placed in the validity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why Easter is such a big deal. The resurrection validates everything Jesus ever said. If it's true... Everything Jesus promised is true. If it didn't happen, then Jesus is a fraud and nothing that he said is true, which means we have no hope, which is why Paul says your faith would be futile. According to the New Testament, the resurrection is the crowning moment. It is the coronation of the kingship of Jesus. Over and over again, the Bible keeps coming back to the resurrection as the validation of Jesus as king. As a matter of fact, Paul says this in Romans 10. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, sovereign, king, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, resurrection, you will be saved. Notice the connection between the declaration of his kingship, his lordship, and belief in the resurrection. Paul is saying the resurrection validates the kingship of Jesus. And when you believe in and surrender your life to this resurrected king, you will be saved. You see that connection again between the resurrection and the kingship of Jesus. When Paul writes to Timothy, it says this, Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Paul says, that's the good news I preach. You get that? The message Paul says that he preached everywhere was Jesus Christ, point one, a descendant of David, point two, raised from the dead, point three. To first century Jews, that phrase, a descendant of David, would have been an automatic understanding. They would have known what that phrase meant. Because for centuries, the prophets had foretold of a Messiah king that would come from the line of David. So when Paul says it that way, they know, everybody knows, Paul is saying, Jesus is the one. And how does Paul know Jesus is the one? He was raised from the dead. The resurrection was the coronation of Jesus and the validation of his authority. Paul says, this is the gospel I preach. This is the good news I preach. Jesus Christ, the promised king, raised from the dead. Listen, dead kings can't reign. Every ancient king, be it the pharaohs of Egypt or the emperors of Rome, They all declared themselves to be descendants of the gods, chosen to rule by some kind of divine authority. But all of those self-advancing pretenders, all the emperors and Caesars who claimed divinity were revealed to be frauds the day they died. A king could build up a vast dominion, amass powerful armies. He could construct imposing cities and mold entire nations to his desires. But the minute he died... His nearly godlike regime would end and all his glorious plans would crumble. Every great historical monarch died and their authority died with them. That's why the resurrection of Jesus is so important because dead kings can't reign. Do you remember what the angel said to Mary before the birth of Jesus? Right before Jesus' birth. 
Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Listen to this. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. There that is again. And he will reign forever. His kingdom will never end. How's that possible? How can he reign forever? Here's how. Listen to Paul. Listen to what Paul says. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line. And he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King. As Paul said, the gospel, this is the message I preach. Jesus Christ... The promised king raised from the dead. The resurrection is the coronation of Jesus as king and of his kingdom. There will be no end. But here's the problem. Modern people, especially modern American people, don't understand kings and kingdoms. We don't really understand what it means to bow our knee to a king. I think we understand the concept of what historical kings did But we have no concept what it means to live under the rulership of a king. That's why most people, even most church-going people, don't really understand what it means to surrender to Jesus as king. For the most part, people get the concept of Jesus being their savior. We know that he substituted himself for our place on a cross and died the death we should have died so we can know and experience eternal life. Most people get and want Jesus as Savior. But there are very few people who actually understand what it means to make him their king. I've never seen this play out more profoundly than in a conversation I had with a man named Robert My wife's family, my in-laws, have always had, we've been married 30 years, dated years before that, and so I've been in their family a long time. Their family has had an open-door policy the whole time I've known them, and they've had foster kids, they've been a foster family, Haley was raised with a lot of kids that were not siblings in her home, biological siblings. Um, There were a lot of foreign exchange students that came through her home, and, and then it was not uncommon on holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, there was a connection between their family and local homeless shelters. One of the shelters would call and they would be overrun at Christmas or Thanksgiving. I vividly remember one Thanksgiving, we're about to eat, the phone rings. I hear Haley's mom say, sure. Then she starts running around throwing more food out and more place settings. And a few minutes later, a van shows up and this load of homeless guys get off that came right off the street. And all of a sudden we're having Thanksgiving with a bunch of guys off the street. We're all getting to meet. Over the years, that became normal. One of these guys that came into their family, his name was Robert, and we spent a lot of time with Robert, and Robert got back on his feet and got his own place to live, and my mother-in-law was sharing her faith with Robert, and one day she was over at his apartment taking him something, and she calls me and says, Brian, Robert is ready to give his life to Jesus. He wants you to pray with him. So I rushed over to Robert's apartment, and and this is an exciting moment, and I I, I sat down with Robert on the couch and look at him, and I just said, Robert, this is what this this means. It means you've been in the driver's seat of your life. You're now willing to scoot over to the passenger seat, and you're willing to let Jesus drive. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth he is Lord, and you believe in your heart he was raised from the dead, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You let him be Lord, and then he will become Savior. And then Robert looked at me without hesitation and said, I'm not doing that. I'm not letting anybody have control of my life. I said, I thought you wanted to give your life to Jesus. I want him to forgive my sins. I want him to go to heaven, but I'm going to control my life. Nobody else is controlling my life. And I said, Robert, it doesn't work that way. He can't be your savior for eternity unless you're willing to make him your Lord in the here and now. And Robert chose No, once he truly understood, he said, I don't want that. Robert wanted Jesus to be his savior, but he refused to allow Jesus to be his king. He wanted an eternal bail bondsman. He wanted some insurance for eternity, but he didn't want to surrender the authority of his life to the rule of the king. But you can't have one without the other. We want Jesus to help us when we need it. We want him to be the forgiver of our sin. We want him to be the way maker when we're boxed in or our refuge in the middle of a storm or the guide for us when we're lost on our way. 
but we don't truly want to surrender control of our lives to him. Surrender and submission are dirty words in our culture. Like inborn into us is the human desire to control. And our culture reinforces that desire telling us that we should be the masters of our own domain. But that doesn't work in his kingdom. The kingdom of God is not a democracy ruled by a majority or an autocracy ruled by you. To truly come into the kingdom of God means you bow your knee to the king. He has to become savior king. Sure, as savior, he forgives you and seals you for eternity. But as king, he governs and orders your life, not just in eternity, but also in the here and now. Because his desire is that under his rulership, your life will flourish the way he designed life, the way he intended it. Becoming a Christian or giving your life to Jesus means living under his authority, allowing him to have the final say over your entire life. The question is, will you let him? Robert wouldn't. He wanted Jesus on Robert's terms, not on Jesus's terms. Will you let him be king over your decisions, not just where it's easy and not just where you agree or you like it, but will you let him be king? If you really like the idea of Savior Jesus, but you recoil at the idea of King Jesus, then you're probably spending a lot of time trying to get Jesus to adjust his will to yours instead of you adjusting your will to his. And you're probably just adding Jesus to your current way of thinking and doing things, never really changing, expecting him to just validate your life as it is. He will be your savior just like you are. You don't have to change a thing. You come to him just like you are. But when you make him your savior king, you're giving the king's authority permission to transform you from the inside out. If you want savior, but no king, I would tell you, you've completely missed the point of a relationship with Jesus. Because when Jesus is king, there is no your way or my way there is only his way you give up the right to be the ruler of your own domain but here's the difference you've got to know this he's unlike any other king jesus doesn't want control of your life because he's some authoritarian control freak He's the author and the creator of life, and he knows how this life is supposed to be lived. He designed it, and there are boundaries, and his rule is in place, because if we live within his rule, under his rulership and authority, life will flourish like it can't in any other way. He's watched the human race destroy itself simply because we wanted to be our own kings. We, we, if we would just simply surrender our lives to this king, His rule in our life would lead us to true joy and true fulfillment. He has your best interest in heart. He's a good king with good intentions for you and good plans. A loving king, a just king, a trustworthy king. And his rulership in your life is going to lead you to far more fulfillment than if you choose to wear the crown yourself. If you've surrendered your life at some point in your past to Jesus as your savior but you've never let him be your king, you'll never truly know the joy of what it means to follow Jesus. Matter of fact, when you make Jesus your savior, but you never let him be your king, there's nothing but religious misery in that. It's the reason a lot of people try the Christian life and they end up turning back on it saying, I tried that and it didn't work. But if you never really, like really let him be king, then you never really tried it the way the gospel says it. It doesn't work unless he is savior king. If we truly understood what it meant for Jesus to be king, we would never recoil from it. The possibility of it would bring us incredible joy. It would truly be good news to us. The word gospel literally means good news. and In the the language of the New Testament, it translates this way, literally, news that brings joy. That's what the gospel means, news that brings joy. The word gospel wasn't even a religious word in the first century. It simply meant history-making news. It was life-shaping news. The gospel news was different than everyday ordinary news. The the gospel news was world-changing news. For example, 
There's an ancient Roman inscription from about the same time as Jesus that starts this way. The beginning of the gospel of Caesar Augustus. It's the story of the birth and coronation of the Roman emperor. A gospel was just the news of some event that changed things in a meaningful way. It could be the ascension of a new king to the throne. It could be a victory in battle. That could be gospel. For example, Greece was invaded by Persia. Persia started enslaving some of the Greek cities. Greece won two battles at Marathon and Solness, and they sent messengers out ahead of the warriors to proclaim the good news to the cities. And they announced to them, we have fought for you. We have won. You are no longer slaves to Persia. You are now free. That was the gospel to them, a world-changing, life-changing announcement. The gospel is something that has happened in history. Something that has been done for you that changes your status forever. Do you realize what I'm doing today? I'm the herald. I'm, I'm the messenger running out in front of the king today announcing to you the good news. The tomb is empty. Jesus has been crowned as king. You no longer have to live as a slave to the destruction of your own self-rule. The king of all kings is inviting you into his life-giving kingdom. There is freedom in your surrender. All you have to do is bow your knee to the king. Jesus said this, the kingdom of God has come. Repent. And believe the good news. Here's another way to think about good news. In the opening two chapters of the Bible, you see what God really wanted for human life. I mean, in the first two chapters of the Bible, it's perfect in the garden. The human race was whole. Socially, emotionally, psychologically, physically, spiritually, everything was perfect because God was king. Our lives were flourishing the way he designed and he intended. In chapter 3... Everything took a turn for the worse. The human race looked at God and said, we want the crown. We don't want to do it your way anymore. We don't want you to be king. We want to be the rulers of our own lives. We took the crown and we crowned ourselves as the king of our own domains. And at that moment... We became consumed with self-centeredness and self-absorption, and that has become the disintegration of the human race. Why do we have wars? Why do we have class struggle, family breakdown, injustices? Why are our relationships constantly exploding? It's the darkness of our self-centeredness. When we decided to be our own sinner, our own kings, when we took the crown from him and crowned ourselves, everything fell apart physically, socially, spiritually, psychologically. The good news of the gospel is this. God, in his mercy, is longing for us. This king is gracious and kind. He wants to restore back to us in our own lives and in the world what we have broken. We just have to give him the crown back. We have to take the crown off our heads, lay it at his feet, and make him the king. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news. Giving him the crown back, saying, I don't want to run my life anymore. This isn't going well for me. I, I want you to be king. This, uh, this, this isn't work. That's repenting. That's believing the good news. Making him king is how you come into the kingdom of God. The question is, will you choose to live in the destruction and disintegration under the rule of your own kingship? Or will you bow the knee to the king whose rule will make your life flourish both here and now and for eternity. That's the most important question you will ever answer in your life. Are you going to self-rule and live under the disintegration of your own kingship? Or are you going to give the crown to the king who can make your life flourish the way the creator of life truly intended it? I want you to have a moment to think about your response to that question. It's a really important question. In just a moment, I'll bring the whole room to a place of decision. But first, I want us to have a coronation moment. That's what today is, a coronation. 
As Americans, we understand inaugurations. We just don't really understand coronations. We know what it means to inaugurate a president. We really don't know what it means to crown a king. But even in an inauguration, there is a, usually a powerful song right before the president is sworn in. We're going to have a coronation song today, and it's in that moment of that song. I want you to ask yourself the most important question you'll ever ask yourself in your life. Am I going to keep the crown or am I going to give it to him? Am I going to let him be the king? It's the most important question you'll ever ask in your life. Listen, over the last few days, I've been praying for certain people I don't even know. I can't get this dad off of my heart who brought his family to church today. Um, you, you, um, your really family really hadn't been to church a lot. Maybe it had been a long time and you made a courageous decision today to bring your whole family as hard as it was. You got everything together and you made it to church today. And I want to bless that. I want to, I want to honor your courage today, but dad, can I challenge you? Don't just lead them to church, lead them to the King. There's a single mom I've been praying for you. It's hard. <laughs> because you got all these kids and trying to get them ready and get them to the house of God. You don't have a guy there helping you. It's tough, and, but you made it today because it was Easter. This is not all that normal for you, but you made it today. I'm here today because a single mom led me to the king. There was no man in my life to do that. My single mom led me to the king. And mom, I want to challenge you today. Just don't lead them to church. Lead them all the way to the king. I've been praying for an addict or anybody else that has been away from God, away from church because of shame. Guilt and shame has kept you. And I want you to hear me say it again. He doesn't care where you've been, what you've done, how far you've messed up, how bad you've failed. The Savior will take you just like you are. But things start changing. I've been an addict. I know things change when you say, I don't want you to just forgive me of my past. I want you to be the king of my present. And those of you riddled with guilt and shame, all you got to do is give him the crown back today. And today will be the first day of the rest of your life. I want you to consider, even if you you, you, you were at a confirmation when you were little, or you can point to a baptism at seven years old, and you, you had that moment. But most of your life, he's been your savior, but you've never crowned him as king. He's never governed your life. Today, he's supposed to become savior king. What are you going to do? Make a decision during this coronation song. Decide on this Easter. Are you going to let him wear the crown? Listen to this.
you're not already standing, would you stand with me across this room today? As a pastor of a church, you do your best to honor God and honor people in the way you lead. I don't always get it right. But I am confident that what I'm about to do is what the Lord asked me to do. Confident. When I give invitations, I usually try to, I have the people's hearts and minds, you know, in my, I don't want to embarrass anybody. I try to lower the bar, you know, I've, I've had people text it in, I've given you cards, you can write it out and discreetly place it in an offering so that you made a decision. And while I was praying about this, the Lord said, this is supposed to be a coronation. He said, don't do that. I want them to choose me, unashamedly choose me. And today, I, I, I'm gonna take this massive risk. Look, I know this, I argued with him, I'm like, Lord, you don't do that. Like, this is Easter. People walk in church gawking, looking at it, what everybody's got on. Nobody knows who's new, who's here every week. It's just, this is not the day people walk the aisle. He said, I want them to choose me. So, Dad, if you brought them to church today, but you need to lead them to Jesus, even if you have to come alone and they won't come with you, bow your knee to the King. And if they will come with you, bring your whole family to the King. Mom, single mom teenager in different heart some of us let him be savior but we've never let him be king today is the day we we crown him in our life we we try to let him be savior at some point in the past but we've never crowned him and let him govern our life today is the day we make him king people are already coming I'm going to count to three. They're helping you. They're helping you. One, when I count to three, if you need to crown him, two, come on, this is the day. Three, get to the nearest style and come. Come on, crown him as king. Crown him as king today. Crown him as king today. Today is the day. Easter 2024. Come on, choir, ask him one more time. What would you do? What would you do? just a little bit more just a little bit more somebody's making a decision right now you're wrestling on the inside crown him crown him crown him crown him crown him forget about what people think forget about what you've done forget about where you've been i'm not asking you to join a church i'm asking you to crown jesus as your king crown him The night I gave my life to Jesus as a drunk, I came into the church drunk, I asked this question. He had begged and pleaded and I didn't respond. I was sitting on the third row and I said to myself, if he asked just one more time, I'll go. And it wasn't a few more seconds, he said, I felt like I need to ask one more time. So if there's anybody in this room like me, I'm just gonna ask one more time and I'm gonna lead these people in a prayer. What are you gonna do? You're still making a decision. I'm going to wait five more seconds. If you need to be here, come on, come on, come on, come on. It'll change your marriage. It'll change your life. It'll change everything. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. Come on. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To those of you that are at the front, I've got a prayer that I wrote for us today. There are no magic words in this prayer. It's the posture of your heart that matters. The night I came to Jesus, a pastor put words in my mouth because I didn't know how to say them, but I wanted to say what he was saying. 
they're going to put these words on the screen. I'm going to give you this. I have a card today, and I'm going to give this to you when you leave today for you to take it with you. But we're going to pray this prayer together. I wrote it for this moment, and I want you to pray it with me. If you can see the screens or you can hear me pray it, I want you to pray it with me today. I'm going to say it out loud. You say it in your heart. Jesus, your sacrifice for me on the cross not only covers the debt of my sin, it reveals the depth of your love for me. Your resurrection not only testifies to the truth of your promises, it validates your authority as king over all things. You are the king of kings. I want and I need you as my savior. But today, I truly understand the gospel. I realize you came to be my savior and king. I've wanted your forgiveness for sins, but I haven't truly allowed you to rule and govern my whole life. I'm sorry. Today, I truly give you my life, not just as my savior, but also as my king. I take the crown off of my own head and I place it at your feet. I bow my knee and I surrender my heart to your Lordship. Take my life, govern me, rule me, change me, lead me. Let my life reflect all that it means to be a true follower of Jesus the King. In Jesus' name, amen. Can the church celebrate today? Come on. Heaven is rejoicing. Let the church celebrate today. Thank you, Lord. For those of you that are at the front, I know some of you are on your way back to the seats. Please listen. I want to give you something. I think they're going to put it on the screens. This card, I've had them put the prayer that I just prayed and some things I want to give you as a gift. There's a table out there that says foundations table. And this shirt I had made up just for today. Nobody else has this. You can't get this anywhere. I wanted you to have a memento of crowning him. The two crowns Jesus wore on Easter, the crown of thorns. This is a symbol of Savior King. And I want you to have this as a a memorial of the decision that you made today and if you'll just stop by foundations this is it's in the lobby and tell them i just prayed with pastor brian at the front of the church they're going to give you that shirt and this prayer and all of that on your way out i'm so excited for you i told the lord i don't know if anybody's going to come on easter but i'll be a fool if i have to i'm going to do what you asked me to do thank you for not letting me be a fool today thank you for responding to the tug of the holy spirit I want to pray a blessing over our lives today. And can I just say this? If you know anybody in your life or your world that needs this encouragement for Easter, we have services tomorrow here, Wiley, Garland, and you know, send them to one of our campuses so they can hear this message. Father, would you bless them and keep them? Would you make your face shine down upon them? Would you be gracious to them today? Turn your countenance their direction. Lord, they chose you today. And normally I would pray for your peace right here, but I want to pause because I know the Bible says that there's a registration book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. And every time somebody bows their knee to the King, you write their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that holds a spot at a table because one day there's going to be a, what is known as a marriage supper of the Lamb. It's where everyone that has bowed their knee to the King is going to have a meal with the King. And out of that reservation book, they set place settings. And I believe right now, they're setting new place settings at the table because new reservations are being made in that book. Today, Father, may our hearts be full of joy and our lives never be the same again. Bless them, Lord. And would you give them peace? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us and for responding with us to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, King Jesus. He really is not only our Savior, but He's our King, and He's the King of your life, and He wants to lead your life every single day. And so thank you so much for joining us this Easter at North Place Church. If you responded to that call that Pastor Brian just made, if you prayed that prayer with us and today you said hey jesus is not only my savior but he's my king and i want to give my life all into jesus Mm -hmm. congratulations 
We are so excited yeah. for you and happy for you. And we want to walk yeah. alongside you because the Bible says that we're not meant to do this thing alone. And that's why we have church and that's why we have community. Yeah. And so if you wouldn't mind, I want to challenge you, scan the QR code on your screen right now that says, I have decided to follow Jesus or click the link in the chat. Just fill out that quick form so that we could directly reach out to you, give you the gift and the shirt that Pastor Brian talked about so that we could commemorate this moment with you and give you more resources and just connect with you to answer questions as you take this next step on the first day of what we really we really believe is going to be the rest of your life and a life full of joy and just being complete in the Lord. And so we're so excited. Thank you for you. Make sure that you scan that QR code. Yeah, absolutely. We have something super exciting happening next week. And we would love to celebrate you, whether it's your first time or you, whether you're watching all the time. We want to celebrate with you. So next Sunday is our new guest Sunday. And we're going to have some, some different segments, yep. some giveaways. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And we want to celebrate you and we want to celebrate with you. So make sure you're here next Sunday at all of our services that are next Sunday. That's right. The fun doesn't stop after <laughs> this Easter weekend. And we want you to come back so that we can celebrate you and connect with you. So especially if you're new, we want to celebrate you with you yeah. next Sunday at New Guest Sunday. You don't want to miss it. We're so thankful for you. Thanks for being a part of Easter at North Place Church. We're praying for you. And we will see you right back here next Sunday for New Guest Sunday.
Thank you.